Mr. Tony True, how are you? Doing well, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I, I see you're in a shared office there. I am, yeah, just I'm uh, um, currently in Chicago, so just uh, <laughs> doing your thing. Yeah. <laughs> in a WeWork. Yeah, that's, I could tell just by the sign that's in the background there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's going on in Chicago today? What's going on there? Uh, I was just down here for a conference and decided to take a couple extra days to take in some of the beautiful architecture and some of the, you know, some of the sites around here. Yeah. And you, what's going on on the building or at the building you're in right now? Oh my God. Yeah. So they are some kind of charity event. Uh, there's a group and they're scaling the front of the building uh, to raise money for, for some charity. And it looks completely terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I've done that before. Oh my God, and, no and it is terrifying. Yeah. Cause they put all these complicated, you know, they put you on the harness, the, everything there, and then they do this very complicated knot. And so everything seems very orderly. Until they say, okay, go over the edge of the building. And then all you do is turn around and slide over in your belly. I'm like, isn't there some more elegant way than that? And they're like, no, you should be fine. Should be fine is not what I want to hear at that moment in time. But uh, uh, is, it, there's definitely a lot of preparation and equipment going on. It's like uh, they, you know, they were basically surrounding me with equipment as I was doing my calls in the morning. And it just got, it was like, you guys want me to leave? <laughs> Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, I, so I wouldn't do it. It looks fun. It looks fun. Yeah. Well, listen, let's get into this. So you're you're here to talk about 3D printed furniture. But before we get to that, Tony True, who the heck are you? And how is it you come to be speaking to all these forward facing contractors all around the world? <laughs> um, well, I guess I am a designer. Um, uh, I've been... Um, you know, I went to university and uh, I studied uh, furniture design. Oh, okay. um, yeah. And uh, I've always been interested in, uh, you know, different types of design, graphic design, uh, industrial design. And uh, I've been doing furniture design, I guess, for the last uh, 20 years, but mostly just on my own. Um, never brought any products to market. Um, my day job is actually I'm an e-commerce consultant and uh, I've been... I, that's, that's what I do nine to five. Um, but, uh, you know, recently I've been working, um, with some experimental new materials and I have a project that I'm bringing to market. You printed a couch, man. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we just say that? Actually printed it. Sorry. It's not a couch. You printed a chair. Well, I, I actually did print a couch first and then oh, I was like, this is too crazy. Did. So I scaled it back to a chair, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, you know, I'm very interested in modular design. Um, ever since, uh, you know, ever since I graduated, I've been working on different projects uh, specifically to do with modular, um, you know, right. like modular furniture, things that can that can be shipped uh, really, you know, really efficiently, and uh, be, you know, and that can be assembled without too much um, work, skill, or tools. Exactly. Yeah. No, you're talking, no tools, you're talking no my tools. language there. No skill, no tools. <laughs> yeah. uh, exactly. Do you know, you know why you're here? Do you know why I invited you to be on the show? No, I had, I had a client. They were with me for quite a long time. And the owner of that cabinet shop was pretty visionary, really good guy. They actually had come over from Romania and his goal, when I did a strategic plan, he said, you know, I said, what's your goal? What's like the big goal that you really don't want to, you almost don't want to say out loud because if it came true, it'd be the coolest thing ever. And he goes, uh, I'd like to build the first 3D printed kitchen. Wow. And I thought, wow, like just taking it, you know, a lot of people say to me, I want to make this much money and I want to buy, I want to drive a newer truck. I want to tow a bigger boat to a prettier cottage on a nicer lake. Those are great goals. But this guy went beyond. He's like, I want to, I want to do the first 3D printed kitchen. And that always stuck with me that what a great visionary he is for thinking that far out of it. And you know, right now to make a cabinet, you take a big piece of wood and you cut it into small pieces of wood, and then you reassemble it into another shape of wood. You know, we take things away from wood. And now this 3D printing, you're adding things to some sort of substrate to build it, just like in a kitchen or in your case, <laughs> furniture. 
So I thought, what a great way to talk to people about what the future could look like for their business. If they yeah. feel like they're just making kitchen cabinets, making built-ins, making furniture, there's, there's a future here that looks pretty cool. Absolutely. I, I think 3D printing is what's known as an exponential technology. So it's something that is not going away. It's actually going to increase exponentially over time. And uh, what the process you described, uh, we, you know, for, I guess, uh, for, you know, f- uh, you, know all, you know, almost f- for as long as humans have been around, most of the ways that we produce things have been, uh, you know, mostly from a subtractive point yeah. of view. So you start with the raw material and you take away from it. Um, and 3D printing is is the opposite of that. So you're basically building, you know, you're modifying the material so that you can build with it. So automatically you're using less material. Um, and it it's also allows for mass customization. So you can you don't have to build the thing the same way every time. You can keep making it better and better. Yeah. Uh, you don't have a production line that's running. You're not waiting for things, you know, like um, with all the problems we're having with logistics these days, uh, the, you know, the time is right for this technology. And it is, uh, you know, like every year, there's more and more materials that are that you're able to work with. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's, yeah, it's definitely very exciting. Uh, it's, it's definitely here to stay. And uh, I think the person you're talking with who wants to do the kitchen, that's the project that's going to be very realizable within the yeah. next couple of years, if not, within the next year. You know. When I, when I think about that from like a facility level, like, like mm-hmm. let's step back out, let's go into the parking lot. Let's look at the dust extraction system. Let's see where all the sawdust goes in the hopper. I can see what you consider today to be a normal shop where we take pieces of wood and we cut them down. And there's lots of sawdust and shavings generated that goes into a hopper. But now I can see another building off to the side where you take all the sawdust and the shavings, you add it to resin. And maybe the first thing that they're printing is pallets, you know, something simple and repeatable mm-hmm. and pretty standard. But over in the future, now you've got clients. Let's di- dial it forward again another 10 years. Mm-hmm. You've got clients who say, no, I want wood furniture. And then you want clients who say, I want 3D printed furniture. You can almost have a, not a closed loop, but if you see what I mean, like wood products come in on the left side of this factory, gets turned into furniture and sawdust. And then somewhere between the two buildings, resin is added. And then on the other side of the building, you're printing cabinets for another type of buyer what a crazy what a crazy place we're heading for right now crazy fantastic yeah Yeah, absolutely i mean and and uh the possibilities are endless for this you know this technology my what i what i really want to concentrate on with my project is really you know like i've been actually working uh for the last you know i worked about 10 years for a furniture retailer and you know and um working mostly uh you know, with, with that company in the role of a you know, manager for the e-commerce. And, uh, you know, when we would, um, basically the products that we would ship were really large, very expensive. It was hard to find, um, you know, you know, like it was hard to find people that wanted to do the shipping. Shipping was expensive. Right. Uh, if the, you know, and most of the time, if the product arrived, the customer didn't like the color, didn't like uh, the, you know, they didn't think it was perfect. That thing wasn't coming back to the, you know, to the warehouse. It this was, sounds a lot like code word for couches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> couches, tables. I mean, you know, already you're subsidizing the shipping to the customer, and now you're going to pay for it to come back. No. So basically, that thing either ends up at a charity or most of the time in I, landfill. Can and, I? Uh, can I share something? Because I'm, I'm that kind of business coach that does crazy stuff. Okay. <laughs> I had I had a large furniture retailer as a client once. And uh, I won't share the name of the company, but I used to joke with the owner. I said your your store should be called the hockey players wives store because Boy. the only people that could afford to shop here are mm-hmm. hockey players wives, right? And she's, "Oh, Dom, <laughs> you're so funny. That's true." But she had this couch and it wouldn't sell. And she's like, "I Dom, I've marked it down. I've marked it down. We hate it. It's ugly." And I said, "Well, why don't we do the opposite?" Let's display it in the middle of the store and jack the price up. And she goes, do you think that would work? I'm like, well, it hasn't worked reducing the price. So like, just take the price and 10 exit and make it like this display feature. in the middle. So we sold it. We, nobody incredible. wanted it when it was marked down. But as soon as it was this premium priced, ugly mm-hmm. thing, like weird colors, it was leather, but it was just it, the, the, the person who ordered it didn't like it as soon as they saw it. 
But as soon as we change the price to super, super premium, gone. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah that's a good strategy. Good marketing strategy. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So you've been around the furniture world for a while on the e-commerce, like on the sellability yeah. side, you know, where, so right. that's the reality hitting the road. And I don't want to take the art away from what you do because you create beautiful art, but you also have that side where like, Hey, we got to move some product here. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. And, uh, and um, it really kind of bothered me that, uh, you know, like when you bring uh, these products together um, and most of them are coming from either Europe from Asia or whatever, and all of the components in the factories are coming from different parts of the world. You're getting, you know, like a yeah. lot of the wood from Russia or whatever, and uh, the metal's coming from somewhere else. A lot of the mechanisms coming from Germany, and they put all this together. We spend all this time and energy bringing it over, uh, you know, to this part of the world, and then, you know, they're like, nah, you know, I don't want it, and <laughs> the product ends up in a landfill. Or, you know, written, it, written it's, down it's, or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so ridiculous, you know? And um, so I figured like, you know, we're going in this direction anyways, we need to start thinking about the environment and we need to start thinking about better ways of producing things and on demand. Um, and, you know, like these, you know, like these types of products should be made at the exact right amount for the exact number of customers. Uh, you know, Just in time we, inventory? Sure. What are you exactly? About? Yeah, instead exactly. of speculation on colors, sizes, combinations. Yeah, I mean, right now, if you order some furniture online, you're going to get it in about two, three months if you're lucky. I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's you know, like, and even before the pandemic, uh, we were looking at delays of usually a couple weeks at least, even if it wasn't you know in stock. So yeah. I mean, I think that there's you know. Uh, people are ready for this change and the technology is getting there and it's so easy to use. It's, it's uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have to all basically go in this direction anyway. So, uh, so we might as well get a head start. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you've, you've got the curiosity of a lot of people right now. Tony. Okay. So do us a favor. First, you've got a cool name for this thing or this line. And that, so can you tell us the name, but they can you, I know it's a visual, you know, you have right. to see it to understand it, but would you be able with your design background, give, build us the visual, like use descriptive language to tell us what this looks like. But I think after people hear the name of your company, they're going to want to Google it anyways, or your, of your mind. <laughs> what's it, what's it called? So the company that I've started is called uh, uh, a disco compacto. And uh, <laughs> I laugh every time I hear that <laughs> disco compacto. Yeah. And I, I like the word because it made me think of, uh, you know, not so much modular, but uh, it made me think of something that could be made, that, you know, that could fit in a small space. Um, it is a direct translation for uh, uh, for compact disc in Spanish. Yeah. yeah. And um, again, I saw the name, um, you know, I saw the word uh, in a children's book learning, you know, trying to teach my kids how to, how to speak Spanish. And I, and I, you know, the picture of a comp, it was an old book, obviously no one's no right. seen these yeah. these days, but there was one there and I saw the word written out. I was like, that is amazing. One day, <laughs> I'm going to start so a we'll company. To the, good thing exactly. the book wasn't too old or this thing be called floppy disk. Like disco floppy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever that is. In the, yeah. That is. Disco limpia. limpia disco. <laughs> I don't know what it would be called. Um, <laughs> So that's, it. can you now get, thank you for the name. I love it. Disco Compact. And what's a Disco Compacto dot, how do I find it on the web? Uh, disco Compacto dot, c, uh, dot co. Dot co. So, uh, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, can, build us a visual in our mind. What are we looking at here? For Because a lot of people are driving or walking their dog as they're listening sure. to the shows. So tell us how it looks. Sure. So it's very geometric. Uh, right now, the chair is made up of square dowels and uh and 3D printed joints. So um, each one of the dowels is, uh, they're all the same size. Um, they're about, uh, uh, I guess about five and a half inches, a uh, little yeah. bit, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and um, you basically take the components uh, uh, that are, you know, that are made with a 3D printer and you connect all the dowels together and you can quite easily, with no instructions, you would just look at the photo, you'd be able to put this thing together. It's pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, there are, 
uh, to add some structure to it, I've also 3D printed um, some connectors that I was heavily inspired from, uh, uh, from I guess, a competitor to Lego. Uh, it was called, it was an old toy called uh, Constructs. Oh, I remember and, Constructs. Uh, Who hasn't played with to, that? Yeah. I used to love them. So this, you know, I guess imagine a chair built out of Constructs and you would have 90% of what this thing looks like. Uh, yeah. Except replace all those plastic, uh, I guess, long parts. You know, plastic dowels would be wooden. Um, the wood, you know, the wood is. Tony, unfinished. I'm so old. My my constructo set was wood. So, but thank you. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> even better, even better. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, I, and it's beautiful. Like you know, I've seen pictures of it. It's beautiful. I imagine you just change the color of the resin and you change the look of the chair. Yeah, that's right. That was one of my ideas. I basically wanted to have this thing offered in, you know, whatever color you want. Uh, you could add some natural, you know, for the uh, for the wood, you know, all the woods made out of uh, birch. And uh, I guess uh, to change the colors, I would add some natural dyes. I could make one that's all black, very slick, or I could make one that has different joints that are, you know, make a contrast color. Right. So right now it's like a uh, the model I've made is uh, basically a pale wood with the joints are kind of a light blush, I guess, would be yeah. the color. So it's almost like a pink. Yeah. Um, and then just have, a, a, you know, for the seats, there's, uh, you know, the seats made out of, um, it has a foam cushion and it's upholstered in a cotton fabric. Um, so looks, yeah, it looks pretty slick. Yeah. Um, you know, I have, a, I guess, you know, I've studied a lot of design history, so there's obviously a lot of references going on with this chair. Uh, I also wanted to start with the chair because um, it's kind of an iconic piece. Like every, you know, every designer architect when they're making furniture, they start with a chair, and it's, it's like an that's their chair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then go on from there, making everything else basically. Yeah, except for a bed. I'm not not going to make a bed. <laughs> Don't but, take the risk. But but you could. Yeah, you could. But you could. Yeah. You could. Yeah. You, could, you definitely could. It's interesting you talk about chairs as a as a as a central piece for people because one of the very first guests we ever had on the show is a chair designer from Australia, Evan Dunstone, oh, wow. okay. and he makes custom chairs out there. Oh, nice! And that's and he's made a business just out of making you know six chairs at a time, that's and then and the upsell of a table comes in, of course, that doesn't. doesn't <laughs> yeah. yeah, why not? So. The other reason that I had you on here is one of the things because my show is about business. It's not about art. And I, I would apologize, but you already know that, you know, I, I'm not the art guy. I'm the business guy. And I'm urging our listeners to think about adding recurring revenue, adding lines to their business, adding a way to take the gaps, you know, the, the up and the down swings of the market out. If kitchen cabinets fall off, if architectural mill work slows down for a bit, how do you backfill? Or how do you get control of consistency in production by having your own lines. And there's lots of ideas out there, but this falls into that category. So what kind of equipment does somebody need just in general to get into the 3D printing of furniture? Yeah, I mean, um, I started out with one 3D printer, bought it off Amazon. Uh, it was- Like a uh, desktop thing or is it an industrial yep. thing with a 60 square foot base? That desktop thing, it was about $300, very cheap. <laughs> um, Huh. And, uh, and it, you know, uh, showed up the next day, uh, I had to assemble it, which yeah. was fun. It wasn't that hard. Um, and then, yeah, just started printing. And this thing was super accurate, like unbelievably accurate. Uh, it was, uh, you know, way more accurate than my wood supplier who cut the dowels. <laughs> there was a lot of sanding involved. Yeah, careful. He um, might be a listener here. We'll see. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because I, you know, I wanted, uh, you know, the, the uh, of the square dowels they had in stock were three quarter inch. I wanted half inch, and uh, so there was a custom job. But yeah, um, the tolerance uh, wasn't there. It wasn't. Yeah, the accuracy wasn't there. So the, um, and yeah, basically, I bought another two uh, printers when I was making my couch, and right. uh, it took me about with trial and error and some misprints, but about a month to print about thousand pieces um uh with with my printers um and uh yeah it i mean it you know it involved printing every day uh waking up to take off the thing and you know like <laughs> i 
you know, and do another printer. It, it takes now, some work. Yeah, it takes some work. Yeah. But when you talk about a thousand pieces, these are the these are the female receivers. These are the connectors right. for the dowels, right? So there's a thousand yeah. of how many, if you don't mind me asking, how many go into a, uh, the chair that you made? How the many chair itself? You know, you're catching me off, off guard here. I don't remember. I think it's, it would be, you know, somewhere around 300 because it's, uh, you know, because it's a lot smaller than, yeah. than the sofa that I originally made. Right. But, uh, but yeah, it's, um, there's, there's quite a few, but they, you know, you can print a few at a time. Um, and, and again, I'm on the cheapest printers you can get. So, <laughs> you know, this is, you know, like right now it's more of a proof of concept and, um, uh, I am actually looking to buy a professional 3d printer so I can take it to the next level. Yeah. Uh, those things will allow me to stop and start, um, that one of the big problems with 3d printers right now is on the low end is that if, if you print, if you're printing something and you're in. It's been taking about, you know, maybe two hours and then you have a power outage or something happens. Um, you have to start again. Um, it can't start where, where it ended. Whereas the more expensive printers, that's the advantage you get. Um, ah, I see. You can also connect them together so they can, so they can communicate with one another so that they can work on a project together if you have, you know, like all technology, it continues to advance. And at some point you have to jump yeah. in. You know, this this conversation is going to be years ahead of a lot of people. And some other people are going to hear this, Tony, and get inspired by you and start monkeying around with it. Mm -hmm. uh, on that note, what is the market saying? What have you seen in acceptance from either the buyers or the use? Like when I say the buyers, I mean like distributors, uh, yeah. furniture retailers, or from consumers, the person who actually buys this to sit in it. Yeah, right now I'm I'm getting I guess uh, the product has been put onto a couple of design blogs and I'm getting some feedback about uh, that you know uh, people love the idea and uh, you know a lot of the concerns are about um, that thing looks really annoying to clean uh, <laughs> uh, you know like uh, uh, there's you know there's a lot of things wrong with it the structure and stuff like this but generally people are really excited uh, you know like about the project. Um, every time someone sees it in real life, it's just like, whoa, I didn't know you could do that. Like it's, it's like, that's why I contacted you. Yeah. I can't believe like it's here. It's here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, um, I think it opens people's minds to, okay, if you can do that, what else can you do? You know, right. Like, and, and, or, or how is that thing put together? How is it standing? And then when people start interacting with it, they're like, this is so fast and easy to make. This is crazy. Um, you know, like um, for the project, I had to build the chair and unbuild it numerous times. And right now, um, you know, I have a whole, all the pieces for the sofa are in my basement in a tiny box, you know, like it's unbelievable. Um, so I think the, yeah, I mean, that's not really specific to 3D printing, but that's just the, you know, the idea of modular, you know, and, um, I mean, this is, you know, like when you're, you know, you're making things that go into outer space, this is the way you have to think, you know, like you have yeah. to, things have to be modular. They have to be able to, you know, made in components. Flexible. Um, yeah. I yeah. imagine, I imagine that with your, your male, female connector system, there's a lot of flexibility there. And you know what people are like, they're going to buy your chair and turn it into, you'll, you'll start getting something where people have turned it into a rocking horse. You're like, how did you do that? But oh, that's exactly. what people will do. Exactly. Right? Exactly. The, yeah, definitely you could build anything you want with it. Like I was, I guess for this project, I was more trying to build like a design language, you know, like, you know, like you have kind of like um, in computers, you have an operating, you know, like a, a computer software language and then people build whatever they want, you know, like with that language, like uh, you know, right. HTML, Java. I was trying to do that for, uh, for design. Uh, and I, I'd say it's a work in progress. Like I think that um, you know, like, you, it, like if you can give people a system and then they just go nuts with it and they can build what, you know, things that you never dreamed of, you know, and, yeah. uh, and then that acts, you know, with, with me that, you know, that would create kind of, you know, kind of like a feedback loop where I get inspired by the users, users, you know, then get inspired by me and we go back and forth like that. Wow. So creative process, bringing real solutions to people. And then also, allowing them to take the creativity to the next level. And again, exactly. I want I want my listeners to hear this because I, I totally come at this from a business side and I take 
I understand how I sound to artists and creators. I get it, <laughs> but I still say it, right? I'm like, where's the business in here? But the business is what you said. There's an entire couch in a small box downstairs. Mm -hmm. So that means I could ship it anywhere. That means I could store lots of them. That also means that if I'm a retailer, I can order them and have them made within weeks, not months. I mean, probably some function of hours, you know, like it's a, it's a day's thing. It's not a month's thing, like a leather couch that you're bringing from Italy. It's exactly. It can be here now cutting down that design time. Right. And then really, I suppose once you start to open up your mind to the possibilities, Mm -hmm. you know, who knows where it takes you. It's just mm-hmm. like you said, once people get their hands on it, who knows what comes next? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, that, you know, like I think that techn- like the way I'm using the technology is one way of doing it. But I think generally uh, 3D printing for building, building anything is definitely just going to increase. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to start affecting all of the components. And, you know, like, and you see the way I've used it to build a chair, which is kind of not super practical, but um, we, we already see entire, you know, like, um, you know, it seems in the construction industry, they're, they're building, um, I, you know, I think right now in Madagascar, a girl is building a school with a, th- you know, with a 3D printer, basically just, um, and, and it's through a, a poured concrete. Right, right. So it seems like we're doing the most impractical thing first. And it's just like, if you could do that, then pretty much everything in between is going to be, is going to be doable. Right. Yeah. But it's proof of concept. And, and yes. again, opening ourselves up to the possibility, because once you do it, once you do something wrong a couple of times, <laughs> then you can start doing it right. And yeah. there's something that we talk about in business improvement. Every master was once a disaster. Mm. I think you would probably talk about it as a craftsman at a table. You know, you've got a young apprentice working with you, building cabinets and you know, his curves are all like, just, he's not doing it right. But you have to remember back, there was a time you didn't know how to use a table saw either. You didn't know how to use a nail. You didn't know how to hang a cabinet. And now you're a master. Mm -hmm. Every master was once a disaster. It's, it's working through that. And so in the process side, it's probably the same thing. You have to build it Mm -hmm. wrong 10 times to get it finally go, you know, what would be better? Yeah. And I made a ton of mistakes. And like, I think, I think what's so great about the 3d printer is it's, you know, you just print it again. Like, uh, you have, you know, you don't have to get it right the first time. Um, pretty much if I was doing this the old fashioned way, I would have designed my component. Uh, I would have sent it out, uh, to have a mold made. The mold would be made in metal and then we'd make a thousand pieces, uh, with, you know, with, you know, with the injection, it would come back and they're all wrong. I have to, I've just wasted a ton of money. And I got it and know, timed exactly. Yeah. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, this way I can make a component, I can print it fast. I try it out. doesn't work. Oh, well, make a small adjustment, do it again. And that's exactly what I did. And, you know, I continue doing that today. I just keep making, uh, you know, uh, small adjustments and, uh, the, the product just gets better and better. So cool. Mm-hmm. Tony, thanks for this. Where, where do you think the future takes us on, on, 3d printing we kind of talked about it a bit but where, you know where is your if you're okay to share it where where does the creative aspect where does the fulfilling needs aspect come on this i think i mean i think in the pretty near future everybody's going to have a 3d printer in their home they're going to be way easier you know they're going to be way easier to use um and uh uh we're we're going to be using them for all kinds of things so you're gonna um you know uh you know, there's certain, there's certain things in our house that we need or, uh, you know, over and over again, I think we're going to be able to print those things. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm basically, I'm, we're going to start with chopsticks. Maybe. I don't know why every time I go for sushi, they give me nine pairs of chopsticks. There's only four of us on the order. They, they seem to love giving us, but that's, that's such a, you're printing sticks, right? I I mean, I'm happy if they don't give me the sticks, but think of the waste that goes into chopsticks. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think uh, there's some manufacturers uh, allow for uh, right now uh, for car parts. Those are 3D printed. Um, wow. Uh, you can you can 3D print, um, uh, uh, you know, like certain components of a car that can withstand the heat. Uh, you can print using uh, carbon fiber is is a printing material you can use. Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, it is... Um, and, and auto parts is probably the one thing that's growing the fastest right now. Um, so, you know, imagine in a garage, you need a part, you can print it. Um, the other industry that's 
dis- that has been completely disrupted is uh, uh, for dentists. So um, <laughs> they can 3D print prosthetics, you know, like um, yeah, right. those are those are all 3D printed um, and, oh. and they can be done right at the dentist office and the price is just, you know, keep going lower and lower. So those are two industries that's already been completely disrupted. And every, you know, every few months we get new materials we can use in these 3D printers. So I know it's, it's going to keep going. I know it's not as big as, as those industries, but I have worked with quite a few people, and this is going to blow you away, that make plastic playground furniture. You know, when you take oh, your yeah. kid down to the yeah. park and there's the, the plastic slide, you know, yeah. think about a toddler, right? Well, they make that stuff. But mm-hmm. just as you said that, I thought, well, you could print your own slide. Absolutely. Instead of having Absolutely. it come from the distributor down in Texas and wait for it to get here. And then you've got, you know, you city contracts, you have to hit the time frames for you can start printing the thing. Absolutely. That's wow. a really good, really good idea. Or, you know, you could print, uh, you know, also if you're you know, like uh, um, working for the city and, uh, you know, like all the park benches, those could be 3D printed using recycled materials. Like there's, yeah, there's a lot of things that, that that we could definitely do right away. Yeah. Well, this show is for forward-facing business owners, people that are looking to the future. Now, they don't have to take on the future. You know, this is this is coming. It's it's here a little bit. It's visiting. You know, we can actually let's do this. Let's find it. Tell us where we can find out more about your design and learn more about you. But as, as I do that, I want to remind people that keep your mind open to the possibilities in this world, because that's where the opportunities are. Even if you decide not to go down the path of doing any 3D work, that's fine. Just understand that it's a thing and it's going to become more of a thing as time goes on. And you're going to have to deal with it at some point. Tony, how do we find out more about you at uh, Disco? What's it called again? Disco Compacto. Disco Compacto. Disco yeah, Compacto. I can't help but say that without a song. <laughs> Disco Compacto. <laughs> I guess the best way would just be, you know, to go to the website. So uh, uh, Disco Compacto.co and everything's there, you know. Uh, the, the current projects and, um, and, you know, a little bit more about me. Yeah. Well, and your name's Tony True. How do we spell your last name in case somebody wants to find you on LinkedIn? Sure. It's uh, T-R-E-W. Fantastic. First name, Tony. Yeah. Tony. And I really appreciate it. It's been, yeah, you know, like, yeah, this has been great. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm happy you came and shared this, this message. And again, I'm inspired by one of my clients who said, blew me away. I want to print a kitchen one day. I thought, What? How come I didn't think of that? That is, that is an entrepreneurial future focused thought. And so now you, here you are. So fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate having you on here. All right. My pleasure. Have a great day. All right. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay.